Hey guys, Romy here. So this is the season finale for Insecure, season two, episode eight, Hello Perspective. Now it starts off with Issa. She went oh, and she went to the common area where she lives, where the malls are, well, where I guess you can say the mall esque shop s strip is. And she notices. First of all, did anyone notice on her sweater it had, if I'm if I'm not correct, nails? That's what had on there. Nails. I said, wait a minute, what? She's talking to this nice, cheery white lady who is just looking at her like, oh, do you want to come in for the night? Issa's like, no, thank you. So it's like, okay, cool. So she says, well, um, Issa then doubled back because she was wondering where one of the stores she was used to, um, where to go. It's like, oh yeah, all of that's changing. This whole place is being bought up and going to be developed into a nice new strip mall. And it's going to be Iwood. And we're like, what the heck is Iwood? I said, oh no, that's the gentrification kicking in. The episode three times will uh, restart or reset, reset at this marathon that apparently Kelly's in and and Lawrence as well. So Lawrence is in it with his Worth crew because remember they were working together to go and be able to finish the marathon. So at the time, Lawrence is still with Aparna and yes, I finally know how to say her name. I can't believe saying a porn because <laughs> oh, I, I just couldn't get the enunciation. So porn, a porn is there. She's at Lawrence's place, and you know he's just happy that he got through the marathon. He felt like he finally achieved something. And she said, "You know what? Why don't you go in on someone else's project because you could at least see how it feels to get in on something that's actually moving, that's actually getting done." And he was like, "Oh, that's not a bad idea." So they have sex on the kitchen counter, and again, she seems like a cool relationship. Lawrence's head's all messed up because um, I think no. Yeah, he saw Issa at the marathon because she was there with, of course, Molly to support Kelly. And obviously, he wouldn't know that at the time since they're at the time he's not buddy buddy with any of them really. Uh, and then while they're out at the bar, Lawrence sees again. He sees Molly, so it's just like he can't escape his past, and that kind of puts him in a bad mood, which is sucks because then he kind of takes it out on the not kind of he takes it out on the partner because the partner. It's just kind of talking about how there's this guy at work that she um, casually had sex with. Lawrence initially thought that was a one-time thing. Does it really matter? No. Because she didn't make a big deal out of it. Of course, this is something that Lawrence would make a big deal out of. And she's going to look at him like, okay, you cool? You sure you cool? Are you sure you cool? You cool? Okay. And Lawrence again sees her kind of fraternizing with him at work. And he feels a certain way, so then he talks to his buddies, he talks to Chad, and he talks to Derek. They help him go and put his TV up while they're all watching, <laughs> while they're all watching the show within the show. Um, you know, the slave show with Regina Hall and them. Um, yeah, it, 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 that show, I want that show so bad. <laughs> I said, something's wrong with you. Why do I want this show to be a thing? I need it to be a thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, Lawrence... He's getting advice, well, interesting advice from Chad, because you know how Chad is. Chad's like, ah, you need to debt that. You need to debt that. You need to get that girl in line, get her knowing that this is the only bus that you're riding. That dude over there, no, no, no. He was the last series model. You're the new and approved. You are the one that she's supposed to be laughing at. <laughs> you're the one that she's supposed to be paying all attention to, not him. And even Derek, who's normally the calm one, is like, yeah, you need to go and check that, because there's some dude at Tiffany's work. I forgot what his name is, but it's an alpha factor because she forgot to. Because he's not there. He's gone. A6 him. I said, okay. So I really want to know in season three what's going on with Tiffany and Derek's relationship. Because I get it now that they're pregnant. Yeah, I jumped ahead a little bit. Um, they're pregnant. I'm just looking at them like there's a bigger story there. We know that Derek cheated. Tiffany did. Were you involved in some emotional cheating to get back at him type of thing? Because that's what it's starting to sound like to me. But we didn't get that type of development because, look, we only had a certain period of time. Aparna and Lawrence's relationship completely uh, deteriorates in the car because Lawrence is questioning her and questioning her, uh, you know, questioning her in the sense of, excuse me, 
why do you keep laughing at his jokes and this is a dude that you saw with multiple times at work and she's just like look I already told you don't be that type of guy and again this is the third time that Lawrence is dealing with someone who's telling him you're this type of guy you're that type of guy you're an F boy you're the guy who thinks he's the good guy you're the guy who puts all his stuff on you know your spouse when you don't take accountability when you get too caught up I already knew this whole Aparna thing wasn't going to work for a multitude of reasons. I think Aparna is a little too cool and too chill for someone like Lawrence, especially at this day and time. So, uh, I figured that wasn't going to work. She said, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to take this. I'm not going to be in this type of relationship. She got out of that car and bounced. And then we see Lawrence. He's back at Issa's place. I almost didn't recognize it for a second because it looked a lot nicer. I mean, they even painted the doors blue. That light blue, that inviting come here and stay for a while blue. I looked at this look. Issa. Mm -mm. Mm -mm, beloved, I know you're not going to stay there for that long. So next up, we have Molly. And, um, you know, they're just joking around about how they didn't know Kelly was doing this. They had no idea. Um, they were a little surprised by it, but then again, she was losing weight like we all know. And then Molly's still trying to figure out what she's going to do at work because she has to make her mind up. So she's going to go and interview. She's interviewing with this black law firm and they realize her talent and that she's special. They're, they said on paper, we knew you're good, but in person, you're great. And we love to have you. So she has that one in the bag as an opportunity, but she needs to go and leverage that. So she's talking with, you know, uh, Durrell and, or is his name Terry? I think his name is Terry on the show. So she's talking to Terry and Terry is telling her, you know, shout out to you. Shout out to you. Go you. Um, you need to go and get a couple of more so you can leverage this. And he essentially kind of puts it out there like, yeah. So, you know, when I'm in L.A., I can see you. When you're in Chicago, you can see me. And she said, oh, okay, friend. Okay, pal. So, guess who's back in therapy? Yes, Molly's back in therapy. And she was like, I, you know, Terry's not... Just, Molly feels like Terry isn't the guy that she's supposed to be with or she thinks she should be with. And then Molly called herself and said, oh, doing it again. I said, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, so she, then she said, all right, I'll give it a chance. I'll give it a chance. Never know what can happen. And that's all a therapist wants. That is all the therapist has been trying to tell this woman for weeks now. Well, or maybe two or three sessions since we know she hasn't. Uh, she's been very hard to stick down. Oh, yeah, I'm just super busy. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Maybe we weren't under draw. But, but anyway, uh, we... <laughs> so she's with uh, she has been successful with all of her interviews and just her work in general at her current company and it's a situation where Terry wants to say congratulations he gives her some alcohol she's like okay I'm definitely with this where were you in college and I, for a moment I thought hmm I wonder if that was rhetorical or literal like but he isn't her ideal guy but the thing is probably a guy that she should have at least tried out and in, in later in life now she's finally trying out a guy like this um, so then they go and have sex because originally he definitely looked like he wanted to kiss her but he's like oh, I'm not sure so then she goes in and that's what she does. They have sex. And she's telling the story to Kelly and Issa. Uh, the whole thing is, she. it sounds like she said it was just kind of okay, but he's a good dude, so she wants to see where it goes. And Kelly said, look, it's fine. Just do you, boo. Do you. And then Kelly, with her usual actionness, apparently Kelly's still with Sweetie. And... Uh, things are progressing further and she, she's kind of a little freaked out about it, like this this is weird this can't be happening type of thing or was she, was she talking about sweetie or was it just general stereotypes because they went into the whole work issue of okay is Molly gonna stay where she is where she's comfortable and she knows the whole setup or is she gonna go and explore some explore 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 <laughs> East Coast see that's when you watch them on TV uh, explore something new and they talk about the pros and cons of 
<laughs> of working with, you know, their own, which is black people versus working with or for white people. And so they're like, uh, you know, when working with white people, you have to constantly explain your blackness to them. And you also have to make sure that you come off a certain way. Working with black people, sometimes they get a little too familiar and try to take advantage, but then again, if they get you, but then again, the white people, you know, they understand it's work at the end of the day and things aren't necessarily taken as personally. And it's just a whole lot of back and forth. So it it's kind of the situation of regardless of who you work for, you're still working for them. So it's never a 100% win-win situation unless you have that dream job. Um, and dream co-workers and of course do north is on again because this is what everyone watches because this is one of those shows so now molly's at work they brought her in because they want molly to know how valued she is and molly is freaking out because molly is looking at them like what the heck is going on she's freaking out internally they essentially tell her, yeah, we know that you've been interviewing around. L.A. is a small, um, is small enough, a small enough circle for lawyers and these type of companies. And we want to know that you're valued. So they put out a folder, and it's a rising star award. I said, okay, if you want to call her a rising star. So that was my X1 against them. And then the nerve for them to actually go and say, well... Here's the thing, we'll mark your progress. It was like elementary school. We'll mark your progress, and at the end of your uh, term, we'll go and reevaluate. And you know, maybe you, you'll get your name put on the main company um, website and all this stuff. Again, they're trying to appease her with stuff she has. She wants the money. I don't understand why people. This is the thing. A lot of people's jobs. Thankfully, not mine. Mine's money-based. But a lot of people's jobs are types where they think that, oh, if they go and just show you more attention and affection and make you feel special, then that's enough to keep... Because that's what they were taught. That's what they were taught in business schools. That's what they're taught in seminars. Um, because I took business classes and all that stuff, I have a business degree. So that's what a lot of companies are taught. But they need to understand that, yo... These people are still working because they're collecting a check. That's just because they love you or love your firm. If they love that, they wouldn't be going interviewing. Where's the check? Where's the guap? I get it. But with you, they actually look at real metrics. With other people, they just throw money at them and let the standards get thrown out of the window. So then Molly, she's in her bed and after all that, and she gets a call from Issa and something's wrong. So now we're back at the marathon again. This time around, we knew something happened to Kelly. We thought Kelly finished already, and they were shocked and astonished. They're like, dang, where is she go? But no. And now Tiffany's there with Derek. Tiffany's pregnant. We found out that clearly Kelly and Tiffany are the ones that are super close, just like Molly and, uh, Molly and Issa are, because Kelly knew that uh, uh, Tiffany was pregnant for a while now. Tiffany had her period. And clearly I'm not a woman, so I was trying to figure out why is she... Because she was essentially on this gurney, and it looked like they put her in saran wrap. I'm thinking, is that to dry her off? Like, I know she's extra, but what is she doing? Was she wearing that to help her sweat more? I, I don't know. Reflect the rays from the sun? I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that she said it was like, it was like a tsunami down there. And I don't know if she was about to pass out because she was losing so much blood or not. I just know that she, her period had a heavy flow. And it was no, no. They had to go and gurney her butt to the finish line. And she's been there for like an hour. <laughs> so, but she was trying really hard. And she was like, you know, you see me? I'm slowing down so that I could go and do this. And they said, oh, yeah, we knew that's why. We, we knew you were looking good. Well, yeah, yeah, we knew that. Yeah. But anyway. It's funny because they go around and they're like, you know what, you were doing your thing. And with this, getting slim. Uh, and because Tiffany does the whole thing where she's like, Molly was getting in that work. Shout out to Molly. Um, what do you call it? Issa. And just like that. Mm, Issa. I don't know what's going on. Uh, Issa. Issa's Issa. That, that's, that's more than enough. More than enough. 
<laughs> and because now we're on to Issa. Issa sees uh, Lawrence, and of course that puts her in the mood. What well, Issa decides in order to bring more uh, focus onto Latino students. Now I already knew that this was going to be a problem. So they're there on the weekends, which means that they had to go and um, make plans. Her parents had to drop them off there on the weekends to get help which was fine as far as the helping them the issue is her boss comes in she's like oh my god this is beautiful this is great that you guys are help but wait a minute what's going on so then isa brings her over and i'm glad isa did this because definitely taking responsibility is very important to a certain degree i hated the outcome but sometimes that's what happens you never know what can happen the boss is pissed the boss is pissed because she realized Wait a minute. So Issa essentially told her, look, the prince, we weren't getting enough support so that, you know, all the kids could go and be in the program. She said, you know, I could have brought Tweedledee, Tweedledee and Tweedledum. She said, uh, no, aside from me not wanting them. But no, no, no. Uh, it's just that the principal, you know, he wasn't really inclusive of having everyone necessarily in the program. What? Yeah. So we took it upon ourselves, you know, to bring them here. Well, uh, no, I'm sorry. I took it upon myself to put it out there that maybe we should bring them here so that they could at least get uh, help. And like I said, she was pissed. She was pissed because she's like, Issa, legally, this is, this is discrimination. No, sorry, this is segregation. You se so you're segregating the Latino students from everyone else so that they can go and, you know, get help, but you're bringing them in on a different day of the week and in a completely different, and on these grounds instead of at the school with everyone else. And I said, I didn't really think about that. I kind of thought about that, but I thought, uh, okay, maybe we can work something out. I thought she was just going to yell at her, like, how dare you, this principal's doing X, Y, and Z, and you decided, took it upon yourself, it wasn't that big of a deal. She said, no, no, from a legal standpoint, we can be sued by their parents and by the school because we took, you know, a portion of the kids and uh, because our program technically wasn't allowing them to be in the originally where they should have been and to take them off grounds and separate from everyone else come on now so i said uh oh i said uh so much for that job isa she's like i'm really disappointed in you and i knew that also meant you know isa potentially getting that higher up job which i feel like her boss really wanted to give to her for a multitude of reasons that that was over so they're watching due north and they find out the one that they thought was dumb orchestrate this whole thing and I think was sleeping with uh sleeping with what's what's the woman's name uh Regina Hall and they devised this plan to take over the plantation and look the stuff is funny the show is funny everything about it is funny Issa she's moving originally Issa put it out there when she was at Kelly's race that she was moving but no she's serious that she's moving they're like how are you moving when you don't have any money how are you moving when you don't have any money? You used to sit up and help me pack my, uh, you know, my expensive items. Pack my decorum. And they're like, Deco girl, you don't have anything nice. Just your pack the breakables. Come on, can you do that? So they're trying to figure out where she's going to live. Because, again, Issa doesn't have money like that. She doesn't have, well, she barely has anything, really, period. Shout out to that Trayvon Martin shirt that's, oh, was it a shirt or was it a sweatshirt that Molly was wearing? I think it was a sweatshirt. So I saw that. I do pick up on the little things. I normally don't say anything about them. I do pick up on the little things. Um, at Issa's job, she finds out that it's Farida that gets the, um, you know, this essentially like the supervisor manager position and of outreach. And... Of course, Issa's happy because if it can't be her, at least it's someone she actually likes. And because the boss like, you know, someone really deserving, someone who's really stuck to the, the, which I got it, which was a stab directly to Issa that this could have been you, but then you wanted to go and act brand new and you just wanted to win and see what that win got you. The ultimate loss. <laughs> we got it. Anyway, so uh, 
those co-workers are trash. The guy, Ken, Ken was pissed that it wasn't him. And he was being such a sour puss. He's like, oh, he didn't even want to clap for free, though. Issa was the one who had to start the clap, like, hello? Do any of you have some common sense? Congratulate our girl. And once everyone leaves, Issa invites Frida to a drink. Because remember, she never does that. So that's kind of the reward of, no, shout out to you. You were right, but I'm not going to say you were right. Because it would be bad timing with you getting this promotion. You'll read too much into it, even though you probably should. So I'm going to do something nice and actually treat you like a borderline friend. Yeah, yeah let's go now. So now Issa is selling her stuff because when she was talking to her girls, they said, yeah, since you have any money... Why don't you go and sell some stuff and see what you can get out of that? I said, Issa, in your neighborhood, they're going to look at you like, homegirl, you're going to have to give us a deal. That's what's going to happen. So you're not going to get much for what you think you're going to get. And that's what her brother was trying to tell her. Her brother is grounded in reality and Issa's in La La Land. That's what I've come to a realization of. And that's why Issa, she loves her brother and also he gets on her nerves because he tells her the truth. He tells her the real and you know she's not someone that wants to hear that most of the time. So, this weird old guy bought her $8 blanket. Um, the guy, you you know the guy, her neighbor with the daughter, he bought the crock pot. And he was like, oh, what? tell her what's your favorite food. Um, I think it was like a canned soup or something. Or an instant soup. He's like, oh, God, baby, sweet. I hope, I hope, you know, good luck, honey. And it's kind of weird because Issa then saw this couple that was interested in the couch that was supposed to be Lawrence's. So she called Lawrence uh, to kind of say that she's moving and for him to get his stuff. And But it looks like the couch still made it to uh, be on for sale. And she kind of is weird because remember Issa doesn't have her car. So she's still getting driven around by her brother. And... The whole area is being gentrified, which we knew. I, I looked at the brother's car. I said, "Wait a minute, that's a, oh, that that that's a BMW. Uh, what's going on, Issa? See, in season three, are we gonna find out what he does? Because he's really cheap, but that's probably why he probably does well for himself. I like I said, I don't know what he does. We don't really know Issa's parents like that. We just know that he's cheap, but." money doesn't really seem to be an issue or at least stability doesn't seem to be an issue with this life it's more so he's trying to get his sister to be stable now she kind of takes him um no he takes her back to her place but at this point her place is cleaned out everything is gone and again you're looking at it feels like a whole new place the pool's fixed up everything about it's fixed up because people came in and bought it and upgrade it and probably going to uh, charge twice as much for the same amount of space only because it looks nicer and the neighborhood itself is a little bit nicer and I said this sucks because eventually all of those other people are going to be kicked out their rent will probably be higher than some of the new people coming in because that's also what can happen they could do rent increases on the existing um, leasers until they just leave because it, it's just too much for them to handle now, she even saw this, like, it's not the same demographic there anymore either. Um, or if it is, you could tell that they're financially on a different level. But she gets into her apartment and she sees Lawrence. And her and Lawrence finally have a much needed talk. Well, first she said, what happened here? She said, you know, things got out of hand one night. I was like, okay, fair enough. So Lawrence and these to have a real conversation. And Lawrence apologizes. Well, he apologizes for almost essentially being himself. He says, I know of a way of sabotaging relationships and making the expectations too unrealistic and putting it on my partner. And then it goes and blows up in my face because I'm not necessarily grounded um, in reality. Uh, that's the terminology I'm using. And Issa said, okay, I'm thinking, yeah, because Lauren, she didn't really need to apologize, apologize, I guess, just kind of apologizing for when you kind of became a sack of potatoes in the last few years of the relationship, that's different, but I hope you don't apologize for anything else, because Issa, her actions were trash, Let, let's be very clear, yours were too on certain levels, but this breakup happened because of her, uh, 
the your relationship crumbling was because of you but then she cheated so that almost threw everything else out of the window see how weird that can be Issa almost had all the power and could have put it all in Lawrence but then she opened her legs to someone else and then the power got taken away if she just kept them closed for a little bit longer the relationship could have crumbled or maybe not but who knows they need time apart that was the thing because Issa you know she apologizes and says what she did to him was the worst thing ever and she has to say it was personal and it was towards him and against him because you know things were breaking down in the relationship and she just felt a certain way about herself in the relationship with him or the fact that it didn't necessarily feel like a relationship anymore so she apologized and i appreciate that apology i said okay growth we're getting growth here so she's not sure where she's gonna live she's gonna figure that out and so when he goes to leave we got this really unrealistic moment where he gets on one knee and he proposes to her. I looked at this like this is some trash. This is some trash. We see this whole mantra of they have sex, they get married, they get the couch back or a new couch and they're still in the same apartment. Issa gets pregnant. Uh, they have a small little kid and then Issa gets out of her head and back into reality. Because <laughs> we know how Issa, we know how Issa is. As I said, if this really happened, this is trash. I said, the show's over. There's nothing out. Like, this is, what? What type of time jump is this? Are we doing this? This is crazy. That's why I'm glad. I'm glad. No, no. So Lawrence leaves. Then Molly, being a good friend, she puts on essentially Indian night for her friend. And I, I'll, well, you know, I don't really know what Molly's going to do at work. I think for now, she's possibly just going to stay where she is and see where it goes. Um, but Molly put it out there that, you know, you can live with me. She said, you know what? No, we're too, you're too much of a good friend for me to do that. So then they have a great night. Uh, she ordered all the stuff Issa wanted. Then Issa left the same day. I love their friendship though. You can tell it's genuine and that they really love each other. So then Issa leaves. Clearly they're partnered up with Lyft. Shout, I, so I guess shout out to Lyft. Um, I have a car, so I don't use that. But we see Molly super happy. I said, oh, God, there's only one. T oh, God, I, I knew where it was coming from. Lawrence sent Issa a friend request, which is great because it's growth. They're going to see each other. They live in the same. Oh, you still. <laughs> oh, mm, still kind of do. Jesus, how it ends, though. Molly's getting all dolled up. And I knew it was Dre. It's still Dre. Dre comes to her house. I said, oh, God. So it ends with it being the same. And Issa's not living with her brother because her brother's way too much, has way too many rules. She's going to live with Daniel. I don't know how that conversation happened at all, but oh, they're going to get back together. The more things change, the more things stay the same. Clearly, that was the mantra of this episode. Please like, comment, subscribe.